Good afternoon, David Campbell from Property Services Atlanta. I hope you're doing well. It's almost Independence Day. Wow, can you believe that? July 1st, 2024 already. Hey, I wanted to take a few minutes and go over some new changes and some new laws that have gone into effect or are going into effect as of today. Uh, one of these laws or acts are basically called the Safe at Home Act. Um, this act has multiple different things into it relating to tenants, but some of the things I do want to touch base on is number one, where in the past, air conditioning, heating, these kind of things were looked at as utilities. Air conditioning or cooling has been added to a liability. Um, so that is now in the act. So where ACs have gone out, we have to get in there. We have to get them resolved because we have a liability to it as a owner, investor, and or management company. So we'll go back to the lease management agreements and or the management contracts. And basically we have around three days to basically rectify these things, um, or at least be working forward to it. Number two is the way we are able to serve people regarding a pay or quit. So, when the rents are due and they basically pay a tenant would pay rent late we are now required to post in a sealed envelope on the front door verification of the posting and a picture of the posting that the service has been properly posted um, on the property this is not the way we have done things for years, none of us. We basically send everything by email, uh, lo uploaded into a tenant's portal and our regular mail. So we will still continue to do that. But if we are serving a pay or quit, which is our final notice before we send it into the courts to file an eviction, we have to provide service uh, and actually have these notifications delivered to their front door. For us, uh, for protective reasons, we will actually have an outsourced um, vendor that we will use to do that um, so that we always have verification that this was properly done in order that we don't have an issue with the courts down the road. Uh, of course, this is going to cost us more time and it's going to be uh, fee driven, unfortunately, um, but it's the law. So until it changes, we will have to follow um, to protect all of us. Um, so that I wanted to touch base on. The other thing is, is if we are running an application in the past, we have charged security deposits, let's say up to three months rent or something of that nature. By law, as of today, we are no longer to do that. The most you can charge on a security deposit is to take equivalent of two months rent. So um, those will change and we'll have to make those justifications on our application process and make sure we are following the law as well. So that's basically a short synopsis of some of the changes on the Safe Home Act, but I did want to go over that with you. Um, the governor also basically changed some of the laws on squatter. Uh, it's called the Squatter Reform Act. So those are, are a blessing in some aspects. Um, anyways, where people are squatting into some of these properties and are able to stay there for months and months and months at a time and we're having such a hard time getting them out of the property through an eviction process or legal platform, I guess you would state. Um, they have allowed uh, us to basically call the police department and basically state that somebody has squatted on the property. The police, for whichever county that is in, may come out to the property and actually escort these people off. If they come out and let's say that they show a lease that they have acquired and said, oh, this is legal, I have a lease, now the law has changed. If the police department basically finds out that that law, that that lease is not valid and has been phony 
um, are, are criminally created, now it, basically they'll have seven days to provide a copy of a factual lease to the courts. And if they don't file that factual lease to the courts and it's verified, then it becomes from, it, it creates a felony on those people that are involved. So now it's criminal trespassing, but with that, they will have a felony that will go along um, to basically um, attempt to hold people accountable. So let's hope that this works out well. The problem that we see so far is all these sheriff departments or police departments are trying to get on the same bandwagon that everybody's operating the same way. So it has taken a few uh, um, weeks or months maybe to get all this going correctly, but at least they're doing something and we may be able to act more quickly and swift on um, getting squatters out of properties. There is a seven day period that they will have obviously to provide that lease. And if they don't, then immediately we can actually have them escorted off the properties with a approved agency and or a approved uh, sheriff or police officer or anybody of that nature. So there are some tweakings of this, but it is taking place. So that's good news. Um, so I just wanted to touch base on that. The other thing is that um, they are putting a cap on one of the, I, I guess you look at it as the, the uh, dispossessory uh, uh, processing or proceedings. So, and basically that involves when a writ is issued. So in other words, uh, people don't pay, they go to court, the judge signs off on a writ of possession, now it's on to the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department are so backlogged and so overloaded because of the past COVID and, and government shutdowns, et cetera. Now they have basically are starting to allow if a sheriff cannot get to it in a reasonable time, then they will allow other entities to basically help with that eviction process. So it the way it seems to work is that they are having a list of approved vendors and these prisons when you talk about vendors we're talking about police department off-duty uh officers uh sheriff department off-duty officers somebody who and it basically represents the law in the standpoint of a peace holder would have to be there but they have to be approved by that county in order to escort these people off to move the writ of possession along from the standpoint of a full eviction. Um, definitely a few little things, uh, quirks in that, they're working through it, but hopefully that will help us on the standpoint of um, these people that are have, um, unwelcomed or stay, um, basically we can get them out. So, hey, I, I may be a little confusing here, but I did wanna take a few minutes and just try to recap it for you. And I'm sure there are questions, but I will try to recap again as we get a little more uh, fine-tuned and things seem to get settled down. But I do want to let you know that these are new laws. They did take effect um, either uh, the past month or two or as of today. So anyways, have a wonderful 4th of July. And thank you so much for all that you guys do for us. And we're here trying to whittle our ways through all these new changes and keep you informed. Sincerely, thank you. Bye-bye.